G'day there. Here we have the IBM Scalable Power Parallel or SP supercomputer. This is of the same type as Deep Blue which in 1997 beat Gary Kasparov, uh, the chess grandmaster. The uh, Deep Blue machine of course had a whole pack of um, custom hardware. This however is somewhat newer and has much more powerful processors. Uh, it's hard to tell scale here, but this is quite a monster at 6 foot 3 inches high, weighing in at a whopping 2200 pounds. That's right, on my carpeted floor here, I have one ton of weight. Uh, my machine has 16 nodes, each with four Power 3 375 megahertz processors, so that's 64 processors total. It has 64 gigs of RAM across all of these nodes and one high-speed message passing switch. How about we uh, crack open a few panels and have a look? Here we see each of the nodes. Uh, behind each of these covers we have two nodes apiece. Um, the front that you can see here is the power supply and disk packs. As we move down we have the front of the high-speed switch here and stashed down behind the skirt which I have held on by this lovely piece of wire here because I'm missing a panel are the four lines power supplies. If we pop off one of these panels here here we can see an example node again power supply two SCSI disks. Each of these happens to be 18.2 gig. Uh, we can pop the units out here. And let's get a close-up because these things are bloody heavy and I don't want to drop it. Inside the shelf we can see the processor node itself. How about we have a look inside? Here we have the inside of the node. We have two processor cards, two memory cards. This is the interface card for the high-speed bus and two PCI slots, one of which has a Ethernet card in it at the moment. The processor cards pop out relatively easily. These are, as I said before, 375 megahertz power 3 processors. And the memory board is easy. Nice little tweedly bop here to uh, hold them apart. Here we can see controller, memory boards, and uh, blanking slots at the moment. Here we have the back of the SP2. Again, 16 nodes. The hole, we removed the node that we were looking at in the front. And at the very bottom, we have the SP switch 2, the high speed switch that all of the nodes talk to and communicate with each other. This has 32 ports, 16, these first 16 here on the left are for switch to node communications, the other 16 are for switch to switch communications if you were to have a whole bunch of SP racks connected together uh, which is another thing this is a rack IBM calls it a frame they have to have their own language naturally at the back we have the power distribution unit each of these services two nodes here we have the node supervisor port this connects to the power distribution back here as I said before the um, this has a great daisy chained cable that goes all the way up that connects all of these together so that when the front end machine tells the power distribution unit to come on it also tells all the nodes to come up here we have the power connector this takes in 48 volt DC the power supply on the front that we looked at before converts it to a usable power supply system usable power supply voltages we have Ethernet here and here, serial. 
This is the high speed card for the switch. And there's our PCI NIC. And that is the entire node. So, there you have it. While IBM calls it a supercomputer, as you can see, all it really is is an off-the-shelf cluster package. A name brand Beowulf, if you like. We have 16 independent nodes that are connected by a single high-speed proprietary switch. The advantage of this approach is, of course, that if you want more processing power, you can just add more nodes. The SP was one of the first name brand cluster machines, and in this incarnation has a theoretical peak performance of almost 10 teraflops, which is a pretty powerful contender even by today's standards. Thanks for watching.